STV, votre télé. News on STV coming up. After serving the National Gendarmerie for close to 12 years, Jean Baptiste Bocam gives way for another to leave. The flag has been handed over to Galax Etoga with honor, rigor, and vigor. Watch words. The government of Cameroon promises maximum support to social centers fighting to ameliorate living conditions of disabled persons. The Minister of Social Affairs gave the assurance in Douala this day. Those were top stories. Thanks for watching the 8 p.m. primetime English newscast on STV, broadcasting live from Douala in Cameroon. The minister delegate at the presidency in charge of defense has officially installed the recently appointed Secretary of State for Defense in charge of the National Gendarmerie, while handing over the flag to Galax Yves Landry et Toga. Minister Joseph Betia Somo prescribed honor, fidelity, rigor, and vigor in the discharge of his duties. The flag, handed over to 43-year-old Galax Yves Landry Etoga, was taken from his predecessor, Jean-Baptiste Bocam, who has headed the National Gendarmerie for about 12 years. The Minister of Social Affairs, Pauline Irene Ngene, has promised maximum support from government to social centers here in Douala. Minister Ngene affirmed this during a visit to some of these centers in the economic capital today. John Paul Sama reports. We are sorry for that mixed up. We talk about the Minister of Social Affairs visit to Douala today, which was aimed at assuring rather support of government to social centers in Douala. She made this assurance as she visited some social centers in the economic capital. John Paul Sama. Adopted in accompanying persons with physical disabilities to overcome their conditions and to be able to be seen as fit for society. But these social centers are facing several challenges that do not permit them to be effective at an optimum capacity. Challenges is we have uh, structural problems, we have finance, problem of finances, we have problem of uh, materials. You know, there are so many children who need, you know, to be raised up because that is why we create our slogan, stand up and walk, and that is our target to see that all the fiscal disab dis disabled persons that come close to us, we make sure, you know, to give them a change. During the tour effected by the Minister of Social Affairs to some of these centers, she affirmed government's support in order to accompany them through their mission. Of course, there are always problems, you know, problems of functioning, you know, they don't have enough means to make the structure function. So we do what we can do because we always uh, try to accompany this structure, but we don't have all the money you can imagine, you know, to accompany them. So we give them what we can do, you know. We give them what we can have. So we're trying uh, to accompany them, to help them, so then they can function normally following the reglementation. This was also a means for the government to follow up these structures and ensure that they are living up to the laid down norms. To these physically challenged persons, this mission is seen to them as a step in the right direction. In less than 10 days, President Paul Bia is expected to appoint 30 senators to complete the upper house of parliament as the country awaits these nominations. Questions have been raised as to who will be appointed and if the opposition will have a place at the Senate. Peter Sosi. The outcome of the March 25 senatorial elections, which turned out 70 elected senators, is now known, and all eyes are focused on the head of state to appoint 30 others to complete the upper house of parliament. As a 10-day period stipulated in the electoral code narrows down, speculation is rife over the personalities to be appointed by the president. Political observers predict the nominations could be hinged on how loyal political appointees are to the ruling establishment. In this light, 
outgoing senators who did not compete during the polls or those whose names were dropped from various lists are placing their hopes on President Paul Bia to seek a return to office. The head of state might also take into account some party faithfuls who have shown their worth through dedication and service. The Senate nominations would therefore constitute a gift of gratitude. Observers have also been speculating on the configuration the Senate may take after the appointment. As stands, only the CPDM has a chance of having a parliamentary group at the upper house owing to its landslide victory in the recent senatorial elections, which gave the party 63 seats. The only other party which has seven seats is short of three senators to constitute a group, unlike in 2018, where the party automatically formed a parliamentary group after grabbing 14 seats from the West and Adamawa regions. The thought of having just one group at the Senate might not be good publicity for the country's democracy, and to redress the situation, the head of state could go ahead to give the main opposition party three seats. We learned the West, Adamawa and littoral regions are envisaged to benefit from the political largesse. It is also rumored that other political parties which failed to win seats in the recent senatorials could as well have seats in order to give the House a multi-party coloration. But whether the head of state will compensate or ignore the opposition will be seen when he makes public the 30 other senators. Prelude to the 2018-14th Radiology Day in Francophone Africa, a press conference held this Monday here in Douala. According to organizers, it will be a four-day intellectual congress to school practitioners on how to better use modern equipment to service their communities. Harry Wana reports. Radiologists from 12 different Francophone countries in the African continent, that is Gabon, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Senegal, Togo, Côte d'Ivoire, Congo, Guinea, DR Congo, Benin, Burkina Faso and Cameroon, shall all converge on the economic capital Douala this month of April for the 14th Radiologist Day in Francophone Africa. The critical or the most important aspect of it is actually that it will be a gathering of most of those who are training radiologists as well as technologists in medical imaging across Africa to see and reflect and brainstorm on how to improve the optimal access to this new technology who are costly and actually are also critical in terms of diagnosing some of the non-communicable diseases which burden is actually uh, skyrocketing in Africa. Within the four-day intellectual event, which shall assemble over 300 participants specialized in radiology, biomedical engineering and technicians, the organizing committee seeks to attain their set objective, which explains why experts from France, Belgium, Canada and Switzerland will be present to train their participants. For this, we will be actually able to train most people in terms of radiation protection. There are specific training on that. We want also to improve how we are using ultrasonologies in most of our facilities. We also want to optimize the way we are using a multi-detector CT scan, but also MRA uh, machine that are increasing in number across Africa. And if we want to get the best out of the, the box that were put in this equipment. However, given that this is the third time Cameroon is hosting the Congress, and the first time the city of Douala is chosen to harbor the event, it is with immense delight the city, through the government delegates, that a Congress of such magnitude is coming down to Douala. Congress, as you see, were organized in Douala uh, in terms of tourism, in terms of positive uh, uh, things we have uh, as a mayor. I am very happy. The 14th Radiologist Day in Francophone Africa is scheduled to run from April 25 till 28, 2018. Some 23 surgeons and anesthetists, as well as nine volunteers from India, are in Cameroon between today, April 9th to April 19th, to grant free operations to persons in need while sharing modern surgical techniques with local doctors. This medical humanitarian mission targets orthopedic surgeries, ophthalmology, urology, gynecology, plastic surgery, and neurosurgery. More in this extract of 
Rajit Kumar, past district governor. Greetings from India to the Cameroon people. The 22 doctors which are here, they will be doing operations. Cataract is the main because our main team is ENT, urology, ortho, a surgical team. They will be doing laparoscopy operations, and this will be benefited to the Cameroon people. This is the free of cost. The medicine and equipment which we are bringing, everything will be left here. And then the second part of the ambition is the training to the Cameroon doctors. They will be performing with Indian doctors. And after we leave, they will be doing the post care also. So this way, this is a two-way traffic. Indian doctors and Cameroon doctors working together and they will be learning Indian methodology and at the same time Indian doctors will also learn from the Cameroon doctors so that they know under what condition they are working so this will be their both joint mission no we it's not that we have chosen it is the doctors here they are screening our job our doctor job is to perform the operations and we are sure Away from health, students in the northwest region of Cameroon have today begun their third term into the 2017-2018 academic year at GBH's downtown Bamenda. About 1,500 students answered present and effectively began receiving lessons. Lovet Bear, Ignatius Samabu. Over 1,500 students have answered present at GBH's downtown Bamenda on day one of the third and shortest term of the 2017-2018 academic year. The students have returned from the exceptional one-week Easter break, and according to the principal, classes have effectively begun at GBH's downtown Bamenda, with about 18 administrators answering present. The administrative staff that reported today stood at uh, 18 out of uh, 20, 23 expected. But in terms of uh, effective reopening, schools have started effectively, classes are going on. To so some of the students who were present in school, they are very happy to be back in school and are going to work hard in order to gain promotion to the next class in the upcoming academic year. I'm very happy coming back to school and all the teachers are crazy. I'm going to put it back in place to make sure that I study very well, study very hard, not for me, to provide good results. I still have to worry because we, um, when, we are, when we are studying, we are studying and we are studying. The principal has appealed to students of GBHS downtown to take their academics seriously because the administration shall not tolerate anyone who has below the required average. We cannot write the exam for them. They are the ones who write the exams for themselves. And uh, any person who falls below the required mark for promotion will either repeat or be asked or advised to withdraw from the school. We wouldn't tolerate that. A week ago, the Minister of Secondary Education, Naluva Lyonga, issued a communique extending the date for GC registration to the 13th of April. And so far, only one student has showed up for registration at GBH's downtown Bamenda. Uh, when the minister sent out that uh, circular extending the registration of GCE to the 13th of April, I called on my collaborators to return to school. Only one candidate has shown up today, and we have registered the candidate. The government of Cameroon has banned the importation of one-day-old cheeks and other poultry products from Nigeria. The move from the customs headquarters comes at a time when the poultry sector is facing internal difficulties. Peter Sosie reports. Cameroon custom authorities have outlawed the importation of table birds and other poultry products from Nigeria. This follows observations by the Ministry of Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Industries of mass entry of Nigerian poultry into the country. The Cameroon Poultry Interprofessional Council, IPAVIC, a major actor in the sector, is not comfortable with the quality of these imported products owing to the threats of bird flu in that country. The, the 
then reveals the products are smuggled through porous maritime areas like Tiko and Mabanda. We learned that the recent bed flu outbreak badly affected the poultry sector in Cameroon, leading to an acute scarcity of chicken in markets. This explains why farmers are importing from Nigeria. The crisis in the poultry sector has come with economic inconveniences. Other chains, such as food and medication, are declining, leading to a fall in employment, the Pavic Boss tells us. After being wiped out by massive imports of frozen chicken and the bird flu scare, the poultry sector is gradually collapsing. To curb the menace, Ipavik has been sensitizing poultry farmers on the dangers of Nigerian products. The Ministry of Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Industries is also working on the master plan to boost the sector. Live in peace and unity while celebrating cultural diversity. These recommendations are from Narcis Mwele Kombi, Minister of Arts and Culture, during the launching of the fifth edition of the Limbe Festival of Arts and Culture in the southwest region of Cameroon. Clarice Kowe, Tebo Shikrak. The opening ceremony of the 2018 edition of the Limbe Festival of Arts and Culture, Freestag, started with a carnival parade displaying cultural diversity from the four zones of Cameroon and beyond the country, emphasizing on the idea of national integration, peace, and unity. Presiding over this fifth edition of the Limbe Festival of Arts and Culture, which coincided with the 160th anniversary of the founding of Victoria, today known as Limbe, the Minister of Arts and Culture, Narcis Mwele Kombi, congratulated the population of Limbe on a successful organization while calling on them to use this cultural event and display their artifacts and also remain a law-abiding and peaceful population. The start is sending a message of uh, peace, a message of unity and national integration, and it is a celebration of living together in this uh, very beautiful land very beautiful city. Peace is very precious. Uh, unity is a goal. And multiculturalism, our national integration, the cultural diversity is a treasure in our country. But you cannot promote culture without peace. That's why it's really important to support such events. The vision bearer, who is also the government delegate to the Limbe City Council, Andrew Mutanga Mojimba, thanked the chiefs for their collaboration in making Festac a success since its inception in 2014. He further appealed for all lovers of art and culture to chip in solid support for more successful editions of Festac in future. To some chief, the Limbe Festival of Art and Culture has always been remarkable. More better than the one of 214, 213, 212. Uh, so it means that the government delegate is really uh, progressing. A walk to the various exhibition stand, presentation of the historic town of Limbe to the minister, and the lane of the foundation stone mark day one of the Festival of Art and Culture. Let's get news out of Cameroon with VOA. Researchers say it can typically take people who suffer from acute psychosocial stress more than half an hour to recover from an episode. But they found when patients are exposed to blue ambient light, the relaxation process happens more quickly. We compare the relaxation of the blue light with that of the white ambient light and find that reaching the minimum stress point is three times faster with the blue light. After completing the stress test, a dozen volunteers were exposed to the blue light while they sat in beanbag chairs. An EEG cap was attached to their heads to record the data. 
This finding could make a difference in kids with behavioral issues in classrooms. When children here have an aggressive outbreak, it can take half hour until they relax, but with the blue light, they were much better within a minute or so. We showed that they really do not have to be out of class for long. The technique can also be used outside the classroom. For instance, someone gets to work on Monday morning and is stressed after a traffic jam. They could enter a room like this and for three minutes be exposed to the blue light. It could also help them relax the same way when they return home. Therefore, greatly improving people's quality of life. We believe that this opens the door in the therapeutic field for intervention with the population that has mental health problems and also with the rest of the population so that everyone can have a moment of relaxation. The research was published in the PLOS One Journal, a peer review open access scientific journal published by the nonprofit Public Library of Science. Maria Magalu, VOA News. In sports football, UMS De Loom has provisionally moved top at the classification table of Elite One clubs in the country following a 2-1 win over Apeges De Fou on March Day 13 in the MTN Elite One Championship. The remaining Day 13 encounters come up this Wednesday between Stade Rena and Bambutos as well as Unisport of Bafa against Coton Sport. John Possama with a rundown of partial results on March Day 13. An interesting game of football that saw two sides with early season table topping ambitions clashing at the Marsic Stadium. Young Sport Academy of Bamenda, despite their dominance at home, were not able to take all three points against a future of Jiko Banjun side that has always posed them worries. Yosa got the opening goal through a brilliant penalty converted by skipper Kong Mijut against his former club in the first half. The second half saw both teams going at each other, but the visiting side got the equalizer through Christian Ohanzer at the 67 minutes of play to earn them a well-deserved point, as their coach points out. We win one point. I think that it's not easy to play well for Vu and the others suffer. We're suffering, so today we play well the second half and uh, we fair at cards. We finish 10 against 11. I think mentally our players were good. I think also tactically we were better than before because uh, they didn't got uh, opportunity to score or to shoot. Only at the end they were unlucky to, to put the ball outside. But I think that I'm very happy for these points. It's one point we win today. Given that Yosa had considered the fewest goals in the championship so far, the future players were delighted to escape a defeat but are looking forward to improve their performance come the next game. Uh, football, you know, as a scorer, is not every day we have to score. But uh, I'm grateful with the uh, one point that we're going back home because it was not an easy game. Um, I want to congratulate the team of Young Sport. It's a good team. Uh, we are going back home to work very hard because our next coming match is not going to be an easy one with Cotton Sport of Gala, which, which they are ahead of us. Nevertheless, a point is better than nothing for Yosa. Though happy too because uh, losing a game is three points down and uh, this match had to give us uh, a victory that would take us to the head of the table, at the top of the table. Now we are going to be looking ahead of the games ahead because right now we are really disappointed. We, we lose a lot of opportunities but it's part of the game, it's part of football. So it's but normal. So we have to, we have to just check, get our heads up and continue doing our job. Other day 13 results saw so Ice Fortuna playing a 2 draw against Union of Douala. Aguilar Royal of the Menua reduced the points deficit at the bottom of the table following a 2-1 win over defending champions Edding Spor of the Lake Ye. Same scoreline between UMS of Loom and Apeche Fu, which permitted the Loom boys to sit at the top of the table. New Stars Football Club of Douala were held at home by Yafut to a virgin tie. Dragon of Yaoundé edged Astro by two goals to one and Fovu beat Colum de Sud by the same scoreline. John Paul Sama concludes today's 8 p.m. newscast on STV. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.
Estivi, votre télé.